Hi, this is Paul Stoltz from iPhone Dev TV. We're picking up with the advanced functions talk and we're gonna go ahead and create a countdown timer for a space shuttle launch. So I'm going to create a new project, select uh, iOS, actually, sorry. So we're gonna select an OSX application. This is gonna be on the command line because we're working with functions. Uh, it'll be easier this way. And we'll hit next on the command line tool. We'll call this the countdown and fill in appropriate values here. Make sure you're selected on foundation and then we'll hit next. From here, I'm just gonna save it into my projects directory on my desktop. Let's make sure we're in the right one and hit create. And then we'll go over to main.m and in here we can insert some code. So I'm gonna delete the initial code that we get. And uh, to start off, we're gonna create a new function. So this is just like what we saw in the video for the lecture. So I'm gonna start with void countdown. Then I'm gonna take one parameter, int number, open brace, open curly brace, press enter. It'll insert the end for you. Then type if, open parentheses, number, is equal to, that's two equal signs, zero, and parentheses, open curly brace, enter. Then type NS log, make sure that's a capital L, and then a at symbol, quotation mark, double quotation mark, take off. So this is our base case that we're doing right now, and parentheses, uh, and then our semicolon. So if I were to call this right now, we could go down to our main.m and type countdown zero. And if we go ahead and hit the run button up top, we'll see it says take off. If I were to pass in one, we get no output. Nothing appears on the bottom. Let's just make sure that we can see the bottom and it just exits with code zero. So nothing happened. Let's do our else statement. I'll type else, open curly brace, enter. And now what do we need to do? Well, we need to print out T minus X number of seconds. So NS log, whoops. Then we've got our at symbol, double quotation mark, and T minus percent D for an integer. That's our token. Seconds, end quotation mark, and then comma number. So that's going to print out the number of seconds remaining. So if I were to hit run right now, we would see T minus one second remaining. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna call a system function that's gonna cause it to wait. And so we can type sleep, open parentheses one. So that's gonna tell the computer, okay, I want you to wait for one second. And after we do that, we can set up our next number. So we'll do int next number is equal to number minus one, semicolon, and then we'll call countdown. So this is our recursive function call, and we'll pass it our next number, and end the parentheses and the semicolon. Now, these two lines right here can actually be done in a single line. Instead of creating a variable to store next number, we could just store this value in this part right here, because the expression would be evaluated and passed in. But to just make this more clear, I've separated the two parts. So now that we got that, let's go ahead and run it. And you can see that it worked. So let's open this up a little. And let's try a, a bigger number, like five. All right, so I hit the play button up top. We see T minus five, four, three, two, one, take off. And there's no exclamation mark, so let's make sure we add one. So that is the app running, and this is a recursive function. We're gonna go ahead and insert some breakpoints again like we did in the previous functions video and see what's going on under the hood. So at the very top, we're gonna to just insert a breakpoint at 12. Line 12 is the if statement number is equal to zero. If we go ahead and run this, it's going to stop. We're gonna see LLDB on the bottom, and we can see our stack frames over here on the left. So 
those boxes that I drew out earlier, you can see the main method. So this is the very start of the program is going to come into our main method. It's going to skip over this line and come in here. And when it starts with five, we open up countdown timer with the number. And if I hover over this, we should see five. It's not inserting it. Maybe it doesn't like me. So we'll step over once. Xcode is supposed to insert. There we go. Uh, it, it had to take a, a second or two to figure out what it wanted to do. So that's five. I'm going to open up the, the side panel on the bottom. So if you come down here and just click on this, we can see our instance variables. So in our main method, we have this five. And if we're in the countdown stack, we can see that the number is equal to five. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to step over. We're going to see that print statement. It's now going to wait for a second. So we'll step over that. It's waiting. It came back. Now we've got a new variable here that's not set yet. We're going to step over. That's now four. We're going to step over again. It's going to make a function call that's going to come back in. It's going to check our if statement. You can see now we have two stack frames for countdown. And I can actually switch between the two. So if I click on the lower one, we can see that the number is five. And then if I click on the upper one, we can see the number is four. And again, if you hover over these, it should tell you what the value of the variable is. And if it's not defined, it probably won't tell you. So we'll step over again, and we see the print, we see the wait for a second, then it comes back. And then we have our new value, which is three. And we step over, we check again, and I'm just going to keep on doing this until we get down. So our number's two. We do our check, we do our wait. Our next number is one. We do our function call again. We start at the top. And now you can see I have a bigger list of stack frames. We step over. Number one is not equal to zero, so this is false. So it comes to our else statement. And this is going to be our last one we print before the takeoff. We did our wait. We have our new number. We can see it's zero. And we step again. All right, so this is our last case. All right, so this is our last check. We're going to say, is zero equal to zero? And I can hover over this. You see zero is equal to zero. So it's going to come in here rather than jumping down to our else. So let's see what happens. We step in. We see that the thread is right here. And it's going to print takeoff on the output. There's nothing else to do after this if, so we jump to the end. And now we're at the end of this, this method. So let's look over here on our stack frame on the left. The top one is our, our topmost stack frame, and the bottom one is our main method. So if I click on them, you can watch the variable down here change. So we go from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are our stack frames, and it all started in main. Now, main didn't have any instance variables, so we don't see anything here. Um, because the value was just given like this. But what we're going to see now is as I step after this, we're going to pop our stack frames until we have no more stack frames and we're back in the main method. So let's go ahead and do that. Just lost one, two, three. And now we're back to main. We finished all of the code, so we're at the end of this block. And it's going to return, and then it's going to be over. So our application is pretty much done. You can hit the Continue button now. Or if you want to see what's going to run after this, you can just hit this. And we'll see some assembly code, which is really low level. We don't write that stuff. We just see that uh, when we're debugging sometimes. So don't worry about that. And you step over. And you can't step anymore because the program has ended with exit code zero. So we're done. And that is using recursion. Um, to sort of just demonstrate how the stack frame works uh, with multiple calls to the same method, just to show you sort of the levels uh, and how the variables sort of have their distinct values in different frames. So remember, stack frames are kind of like a sandbox that you can play in, and it has its own sort of toys uh, that you can interact with. And in this case, they're numbers 
uh, and each stack frame is separate from the other stack frame. So the, the numbers that you're dealing with in here uh, between function calls are, are not going to share the same values. All right, so play around with this a little bit more. Uh, change the number down here to something bigger. Maybe insert some instance variables like start number is equal to five, and then you could call it with start number. Uh, if we ran this again, uh, just for kicks, you would see it would stop again. And if we click on the main method, you'll see start number is initialized to five. So we can step through again, or we can just run it. And each time we hit the play button, it's going to stop at our breakpoint. If you no longer want it to stop at your breakpoint, then just press the breakpoint button down here, and that will turn off breakpoints so that when you hit the resume, continue program execution button, it'll finish running the application, and on the right we'll see all of our print statements.